Welcome back to the channel. Martin Kulldorff was a professor at Harvard Medical School who was recently fired, and he wrote about his ordeal in City Journal. It's a very interesting story. I'm going to talk about that ordeal and why I think you should sign a petition that Harvard reinstate Martin Kulldorff. So let's get started. Martin Kulldorff, who is he? He's a professor at Harvard Medical School, and during the pandemic, he went against the establishment view on a number of issues. He disagreed that elementary schools should be closed. He supported the Swedish model. He disagreed with lockdown. He supported protections for the elderly, but he didn't think that everyone of all ages should be forced by the police state to stay at home. He didn't think children should wear masks. He didn't think vaccine mandates were ethical. He didn't think booster mandates were ethical. And he didn't think that children who hadn't recovered from COVID-19 should even get vaccinated. He thought that was a poor use of resources and that the harms may exceed benefits. On many of these fronts, Martin Kohldorf was unpopular at the time. Certainly back then, people were razzed into hysteria. They were very upset about these policy positions that he had. He, of course, had studied infectious disease and had developed some mathematical models in the space, so this was entirely in his wheelhouse. And Harvard didn't take kindly to him. He was the victim, I think, of a number of cancellation campaigns. People didn't like him. They pulled him off the CDC's Vaccine Advisory Committee because he was critical of whether or not kids need vaccination for COVID-19. And overall in the pandemic, I think he was much maligned. He was also one of the authors of the Great Barrington Declaration that basically was a policy proposal in the fall of 2020 that we focused our risk strategies on the elderly and mostly let normal people return to life. But that's not why he was fired, okay? He wasn't fired for his views. He was fired because he didn't comply with man's greatest hospital, I mean, Massachusetts General Hospital's vaccine mandate policy. The reason he didn't comply was that he had had and recovered from COVID-19 before. So he felt that he didn't need to get vaccinated for COVID-19. And more importantly, he wasn't sure, and he certainly didn't believe, that by forcing him to be vaccinated, there would be a benefit to third parties. That's the key prerequisite to any sort of personal health mandate, that there is at least prima facie a benefit to third parties. And that doesn't mean you have to mandate it, by the way. I think people are confused about that. If you don't have a benefit to third parties, you cannot mandate anything. If you do, then you have to carefully weigh the loss of individual autonomy against the gains to other people. And the gains to other people have to be so great, they justify the loss of individual autonomy. I'm not sure that we get there, even if one were to postulate benefits to other people, but I don't know how one can postulate benefits to other people. So let's come to the mandates. I think the reason why all of the mandates were fundamentally unethical was that at the time of the mandate being issued, which was mostly third quarter of 2021, we already knew, officials already knew, that no amount of vaccination could halt transmission of COVID-19. We had the Provincetown, Massachusetts outbreak, which was largely in vaccinated men, and we had clear signs that this virus was able to have in fact, even people who are vaccinated. And now, of course, we know the reality that oh, everyone's getting the virus, no matter how many vaccine doses you got. Now, whether or not the vaccine blunts severe disease in older age groups, I think that's likely the benefit of the vaccine. That's why somebody might make that personal health choice to get it. But here we're talking about compelling a third party. So Harvard basically let people get vaccinated. I'm sure that probably 90 plus percent of the Harvard faculty and staff and students got vaccinated. And then they instituted a policy beyond that saying, let's compel a few more percent of people to get vaccinated. The penalties, of course, will be firing the people who don't. And that's going to make the world a better place. That's their policy proposal. And there is just no credible evidence that that policy proposal makes the world a better place. Number one, I think you can legitimately ask whether increasing that fraction from, I suspect, 93% vaccination to 95.6% vaccination with this compulsory vaccine mandate makes a lick of difference. I doubt it does. The next thing is the vaccine doesn't halt transmission. Everyone's going to get COVID anyway. And all the people who worked at Harvard, most of them at this point have had COVID-19. So it didn't have any benefit to third parties as far as I can see. Meanwhile, firing Martin Kohldorf and firing the other people who didn't comply, I'm not sure that we're weighing properly the impact of that policy. I mean, that perhaps has a negative impact on their livelihood and their long-term well-being. And also interesting to note that prior vaccine mandates didn't always have the punishment of being fired. Sometimes they just had a small fine. So the punishment, I think, is also relevant to this discussion. Finally, I think it's pretty clear that by having had and recovered from COVID-19, no one in good faith could tell Martin, you're going to be better off by getting this vaccine. We never made Pfizer do randomized control trials in people who have had and recovered from the virus, so we can't really say that that's the case. And we also don't have great data that vaccinated someone that had and recovered actually slows spread. Now, when I was talking about this online, Mark Lipsitz, a Harvard professor, and others pushed back and they said, listen, Martin wasn't fired because of his views. He was fired because of this mandate and this policy. Well, to some degree, don't you see that the two are intertwined? 
I mean, he is discussing the policy issues of the day. That's his academic scholarship. And some of those policy issues affect him. So naturally, it's a unique situation where his own freedom to exercise his view naturally comes into conflict with the policy that he faces. Ultimately, I don't think the policy makes a lick of sense. And Martin was fired. I want to make one more point. There are lots of faculty members who weren't vaccinated, who weren't fired. In fact, very likely, Harvard had a big list of exemptions, like most universities. Some people applied for medical exemptions. Some people applied for religious exemptions. And let me let you in on a secret. Some of these exemptions are bullshit. I mean, that's not really the reason. The person doesn't want to get it for whatever reasons. And they're saying, I have a medical exemption. It makes my fingertip tingly or whatever, you know. Some of them are legitimate, you know. Some are legitimate medical exemptions, but not all of them, okay. But who decides which medical exemptions to grant? I strongly suspect that when Martin Kulldorff's name come across the the desk and you see that we don't like his opinion on all these issues, maybe he's the one that we decline. So my point here is when you selectively enforce the policy, it is an abridgment of academic freedom because you're only enforcing it in people you don't like. And if you disagree, if you think that Harvard is enforcing it fairly, put out a list of all, you don't have to put the names, just put the age, the medical problems, the comorbidities, and put the reason why they're getting vaccine exemption, the full list of all the exemptions you granted. And then let's add, and like whether or not they had prior COVID, and then let's add Martin to the list. And let's see, is this one of the names that sticks out? Is there something different about Martin's case if we anonymize everything? Or is in fact, you just picking that you don't like the guy? And I strongly suspect, come on, we all know what happened here. We all know what happened here. Let's not stop. Let's stop pretending. The mandates were silly. They're eroding trust in public health because when you mandate a vaccine for no good reason, of course, naturally people will have a backlash against vaccines that were instituted for good reason. And we see that right now with plummeting vaccination rates. So the people who push this vaccine mandate, I think, are eating crow every day. And they're the big reason why trust in public health is declining. So anyway, Martin was fired, and I was surprised when I wrote about this that there was anyone who actually thought that it made sense to fire him. I think they're just still sore about these issues, and they just don't see it clearly. Even if you believe the vaccine mandate was beneficial, you have to postulate. And they say because, of course, it benefits third parties because it slows transmission. Really, 93% to 95% when you fire 2% of people, that actually slows transmission in the area? What happens to the fired people? What about their transmission? What are they doing instead? Don't you have to factor that into your model here? I think they haven't thought through their little claim. I strongly suspect it's not the case. In fact, there have been some papers on this topic showing that you know, vaccine mandates and passports require excluding thousands of people to even prevent one transmission event, assuming the best case scenario characteristics of the vaccine, which we know aren't true. And then the other thing they're not factoring in is time, because with enough time after as many you can vaccinate yourself with 200 doses, like that crazy person in Germany. But with enough time after the last dose, you're still going to get COVID-19. Okay, you're eventually going to get COVID-19. There's no way to avoid COVID-19. So with time, there is no benefit to anybody from these sorts of draconian policies. And then the second thing is, should the punishment be terminating his job forever? And then the third thing is, what message does that send? I think the message it sends is that all sorts of silly hospital policies from visitor policies to distancing policies, to visitor hour policies, to masking policies, to vaccine policies, to all the million policies we face, people are less likely to question those policies because they're worried that the hospital will selectively enforce who to fire them, who to fire, who do not comply with those policies. Can you fire Martin, Martin for not completing a module? Can you fire Martin because one day he walked in and there was a mask mandate and he didn't put on his mask right away? I mean, you can imagine that they will find people they don't like and you will look through the policy book, you'll find one of the many policies they didn't follow, and you can just fire those people. So if you selectively enforce policies, I think you have a problem. And I'm confident that's what happened here. And if they disagree, put out the list of all the people you gave the exemptions to. I know what it shows because I know a lot of people got the exemptions and they got it for a lot more <laughs> soft reasons than Martin. Martin applied for an exemption, actually. He says for religious reasons because he said the vaccine mandate was a religious doctrine, which I thought was funny. So what can one do in response? I think there's a petition right now on change.org. I'm going to put the link in the chat, and that's to reinstate Martin Kulldorff at, as a Harvard faculty member. I don't know if he wants to work there. I mean, his CV doesn't have enough plagiarism to qualify for being on faculty and maybe too many publications, you know, but I don't know. Maybe he wants to work there. But either way, it should be his decision, and you should sign the petition to reinstate Martin Kulldorff at the Harvard Medical School. And the people who are playing games with him being fired and saying, oh, it's not about his views, they are really, I think, being dishonest. Because if they were honest brokers, they would point out the fact, well, I know lots of people who got the exemption, and it's kind of interesting that Martin didn't, even though he has the same 
bogus reason for getting the exemption is all the other bogus reasons because some people just didn't want the vaccine, which should have been their right and prerogative. Of course, you didn't need to force them to get it. There was no benefit to third parties. There never was. And once you offer vaccines to all those adults who wanted them, life should just return to normal and we shouldn't have played these silly, silly games. And in fact, for younger people, life should have always returned to normal because the virus didn't pose that much of a threat to their life and the policies actually were a lot worse for them. So those are my thoughts on Martin Kohldorf. Shouldn't be fired. Sign the petition. Interesting article in City Journal. And if we don't have space at universities for people to disagree with prevailing national policy, and if we selectively enforce these kinds of policies to throw them off faculty, I think you're reaching a very dangerous place where universities no longer serve the public good position that they should as a place to discuss and debate these issues. So I think uh, pretty, pretty bad move by Harvard there. The president, meanwhile, of Harvard, of course, she stays on faculty with her $900,000 salary, even though all of her, not all, but at least half of her CV is full of rampant plagiarism. That to me literally makes no sense at all. All right. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. It's been a while since my last video, but I hope to be back with more videos in the days and weeks to come. I've been busy, but now I'm back. I'm back here behind the desk. So until next time.